In this training movie, we're going to show you how to make a custom plant library. Now the reason you may want to do this is because there are over 4,000 plants and images in the program. Now if you're a contractor like I was, there was only about 50 or 60 plants that I used all the time because they were available in my area and I knew they wouldn't die so I'd have to come back and replace them next year. So I would build a custom library of just those plants you're going to use. So the first thing I would do is I would make a list of all the plants that you want in the library. It would help if you got a uh, price list from a nursery and that way you would have all the botanical names and they'd be spelled correctly because it's easier to find those names if you could spell them correctly because you know how Latin names are. So anyway, make a list of the plants that you want in your custom library. So if you have Greenscapes open, you need to get it out of the way. So either close it or minimize it by clicking on the Minimize button. Then you want to bring up your File Browser or File Explorer. Usually it's a yellow icon that looks like a file um, that's at the bottom of your screen. So double click it to bring that up. Then you want to navigate to your C drive. So go to your computer, double click on Local Disk C. Then you'll want to go to Program Files. So go down to the P's and go to Program files x86 and double click to open that folder then go to the greenscapes folder double click that and then you want to go into objects and then you want to go to plants now you could search from just the C drive but if you've got a lot of stuff in your computer like I do why not go to the folder where you know all the plants are and search there so that's why we did that Next we want to make a folder under the plants folder here. So to do that I'm going to go over here to file, I'll go to new, folder, and I'm going to give it a name. This one I'm going to call my shrubs. Now you can name it anything you want as long as it makes sense to you. So I'm going to put all my shrubs in my shrubs and I'll double click to open that folder. So I have a open fold here. Then I want to open up another window. So I'll go back down here to my file explorer. I'm going to right click over that icon and click on Windows Explorer. I'll go back to the C drive, I go back to program files, I'll go back to greenscapes, I'll go into objects, and I'll go into plants. Now I'm going to start the search. So the first plant I want to look for is a Nandina. So what you do is you go up here in the search bar and you type in the name. Um, you could spell out the whole name. I had already done a search here for Nandina and all the Nandinas in all of the libraries will show up. So now it doesn't matter what folder they are in. You can look at what folder they're in by right clicking on it, going to properties, and you'll see that they are all under southern shrubs. But that becomes irrelevant because when you do it this way you can copy all of them from all folders at the same time. So we want to copy all of these. So I'm going to select on the first one, hold down the shift key and select on the last one so I have all of them selected. Then I'm going to right click and I'm going to click copy. Then I'm going to minimize this so now I've got my blank folder under my shrubs. I'll click in it and then I will right click again and click paste. So now all the Nandinas are copied into that folder. You don't want to move them because it will take them out of the other folder and then that library won't work and you go, oh, what happened? And you got to remember to put them all back and it's just not worth it. You want to copy and paste them. So technically now you have two Nandinas in two places on your uh, computer. Two sets of Nandinas, more than one Nandina obviously. So now we want to search for the second plant on our list. So again, I will bring up the search window here, and I'm going to type in here Pittosporum. So we'll go P-I-T-T-O-S, and that should get all the Pittosporums here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select all of them by holding down the shift key, and this time I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Control C, because you need to learn how to do that. It's a keyboard shortcut instead of right clicking and hitting a copy. Just do a uh, control C, it copies everything. And then I'm going to do a control V and it pastes it in that folder. So now I have all my Pittosporums and I have all my Nandinas in here. So let's go back and do another search. And now we want to get Eugenia. So it's E 
U-G-E-N. So I'm going to stop here just to show you um, what you do do not want to do. If you want a Eugenia, which is the genus name, by the way, we are searching for genus because that's the best way to do it. Um, you'll see that there's Eugenia myrtifolia, which is the plant I'm looking for. But because I did not spell out the whole name here, it's given me Pittosporum eugenioides, which I got a Pittosporum already, but I'm not getting it in my Eugenia search because I didn't type out the full name. And I did this on purpose just to show you this um, so that you don't do what I just did and only put in part of the name, think you got them all, and in reality, you don't. So let's select all these. Again, Control C, Control V. So now we've got those pasted in here. So that's basically what you keep doing over and over until you have all the plant genus names that you want in your My Shrubs folder. You would do it again for trees, you may do it for annuals, perennials, um, whatever it is you want to make a custom library of. So now we've got all these libraries moved. We don't really, but we've got enough to demonstrate here. We're going to open up Greenscapes again. Let's get rid of this text. Okay, now we're going to make a new library. So we go up here to Library, we go New Library, pull it back on the screen here, and it's going to be an object library because objects are plants, plants are objects in the program. Seamless textures would be a texture library. And I'm going to call it My Shrubs. Again, the name is irrelevant as long as it means something to you. If you want it to come up at the beginning of the menu, you may call it A, My Shrubs, uh, just to bring it to the top of the list because it's in alphabetical order. So I'm going to click OK, and I will click OK again. And now I'm going to open that library that I just made. So I'll go back here to Library, and there's My Shrubs. So I'll click on it keeps jumping off the screen here. So now we want to populate it with our plant library that we moved all into the My Shrubs folder. So what I do is I go here to Items, Add Items. Now I'm going to navigate to that folder, which is under C Drive, Program Files, Greenscapes, Objects, Plants, and there's My Shrubs. So here are all the plants that I placed in there. So I'm going to select them all. I could use Control A on the keyboard to select everything. So then I click Open. And now it just built that library of those particular plants, the Pittosporums, the Eugenia, and the Nandinas. And let's double click one just to test it. Yep, it's working. So now I want to save the library. So I go here to Library, Save Library, and say Yes because I do want to save it. So now I have my custom library. Whenever I go here to library, I got my shrubs, and it's populated with the plants that I want. Now, it may happen that you get plants like this, and there's a couple of them in here that you don't want in the library, like this little uh, poodled Eugenia. I don't want to use one of those. So what you can do to customize your customize is click on this, go here to items, and go delete items. And it'll say, are you sure? Click OK. And now it took that one particular plant out. Because when you're moving names, you don't see pictures of them. Uh, so sometimes that's a real minus, not seeing the picture, because there's some things that you just may not like the picture of that particular plant. So go through and do a final edit. And then, again, you'll have to do another save, because you changed it. And now you have your custom library. That's all there is to it.